Well, welcome once again to our uh, weekly Bible study here at uh, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Appleton, Wisconsin. Um, glad you're joining me today. You can do so every uh, Wednesday live at 12 noon or uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. And, and you can uh, follow along with the Bible studies when it's you know even more convenient uh, for you. But it's great to lead you in Bible study again today. Uh, for our Bible studies, we uh, take one of the readings that is scheduled for uh, Sunday's worship, and uh, we focus on that in preparation for our time of worship uh, uh, with the Lord and with each other. So today we're going to look at Luke 14, uh, the appointed gospel lesson, and uh, the title here is Honored, and uh, Jesus Again, uh, doing the work that he has been sent to do while facing scrutiny and opposition while doing so. And, and teaching, you know, as he is doing what he has been sent to do so that people understand uh, what it is actually uh, to do good and to follow then uh, God's word. So before we begin today, let's have our prayer for right service of God. Lord, we know from your word that you desire circumcised hearts and ears. You want all of us, our inner person, desires, and attention. Only then will we produce, will we produce what we produce be pleasing to you. For it will be done out of love and not duty. We align our affection so we rejoice to obey you and therefore bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. So this prayer is important because, again, when we are uh, connected to the Lord, when we are uh, understand His direction in our lives, then we can do what is actually pleasing to God and not just pleasing uh, to ourselves. And that is a big distinction, isn't it? Pleasing to ourselves and, at, and, what, and what is the motivation why we are doing this, and then our motivation then uh, when we serve God. So healing of a man on the Sabbath. Right now, right there in the heading, you should identify where the, uh, the potential problem is going to be. Uh, healing the man, not that part, right, but on the Sabbath. Uh, a day of rest, as we know. Um, but what does it mean to rest on the Sabbath? Uh, one Sabbath, when he went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. You know, so remember the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, you know, they are always looking to uh, investigate Jesus. You know, they're the religious authorities of the day. So is he in line with them or is he not? And that could, of course, uh, affect their uh, leadership and people wanting to follow them. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. And then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into the well on a Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. So what does it mean to rest on the Sabbath? What is uh, God's plan for us? as we live each and every day, you know, including on the Sabbath. What does God's Word say? So in private settings, the rudeness of those who are pushy in their social ambition usually does not turn others off. It's interesting to note, however, that sometimes those who push themselves forward must blatantly, politicians, athletes, rock musicians, entertainers, and such, are not resented by their fans. Instead, their followers they lionize them and even join them in their word number one, posturing. In other words, you know, we respect those who elevate themselves, who point to themselves, who, you know, put themselves forward for their, you know, uh, different gifts and abilities for their, you know, what they've been able to accomplish. So what is behind this kind of resentment of the pushiness of others in one instance, but adopting the same stance in another. And what this text is, is designed to help us to understand is humility. 
you know, is it our lot in life, if we are successful, to want to have all the attention uh, upon ourselves? Is that the purpose of having, you know, these gifts? Or is the purpose of having gifts to glorify God and to do good and not to have to point to ourselves as those who have done good, but rather have those around us point to the fact that we have used our gifts uh, to, to help someone else out. And we know what the answer is. You know, our sinful nature wants, oftentimes, some want this, maybe not you, maybe not those around you, uh, but there are those who, who want to be recognized, who want their name in the lights, and so on and so forth, who want uh, to be appreciated, if you will, for what they have uh, accomplished, who they are. And yet there are others who say, hey, it is best just to do good and use, again, my blessings to be a blessing unto others. So, you know, what is behind this kind of resentment of the pushiness of others in one instance, but adopting the same stance in another? You know, there's not consistency then in the way that we, we view others. You know, they're allowed to do it because of these gifts. They're not allowed to do it in this situation. So where is the balance? Um, the balance is always in our remembering who our gifts come from and what these gifts are intended to do. Um, so our gifts come from God, right? And their intention is to serve God, to glorify God, and not ourselves. So pushiness and arrogance and desire to be so great, uh, to be well known, is not something that we should actually seek after ourselves, but rather let those around us see our good works. And then they can elevate us if they choose to. We can accept their praise if we choose to, but ultimately to point to the one from whom uh, these gifts, these blessings come from. So then this parable comes in. Now, a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So Jesus understands the silence here. They're confused as to what to do on the Sabbath, whether Jesus broke the law or didn't break the law, what is right. And in that way, too, is how we are to just approach everyday life. And uh, so Jesus is going to use a parable to help to unpack what uh, just has taken place, how to teach them what is right. So he told them a parable to those who were invited when he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, when you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, give your place to this person, and then you will begin uh, with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher, then you'll be honored in the presence of all who sit at table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So Jesus told the pushy people that if they really wanted to be honored by others, they were going about it the wrong way. They should seat themselves at less prominent and less convenient places. Then, should the host invite them to move up to better places, those around them would honor them for their humility. Oh, well, isn't that nice that, you know, you took this low place and they invited you up and, you know, gave you, you know, this more, more important place to sit. So Jesus was uh, needling them with his irony. He surely knew that such an approach could be just a plot, a display of false humility, to further social ambitions. It might fool the people around them who couldn't see how self-centered their humility is. But those who are involved in such a contrived scenario are really just full of themselves. Real humility is not opposed. In other words, it will ultimately, you know, just like a lot of the, well, just use this very slang term, the phony baloney that is around us, you know, it, 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 it's exposed by the light. You know, a person can only put up a, a facade for so long before their true self comes out and that's what you know is going to take place here uh, for those who desire um, 
you know, to exalt themselves rather than have true humility. So Jesus ended his instruction to the guests with a principle that Scripture repeats in a number of, of ways and in many places. Everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So what is it about pride that makes it top the list of things that can't stand, right? Pride uh, comes before the fall. Um, you know, in Wisconsin here, you know, if you're familiar uh, with, you know, you got to be familiar with the Green Bay Packers. So, and you would know then that Aaron Rodgers is the the quarterback of the Packers. And you know, we've had drama. I think the last two seasons, where he, you know, was, in my opinion, very much exalting himself. You know, I'm a quarterback. I deserve this. I deserve that. So much for so much so that it seemed to, uh, you know, put the team in handcuffs. They couldn't do anything because he seemed to hold all the cards. And yes, he's a great player. However, the 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 danger, right? Even though he's very gifted, the danger is by elevating yourself up to be greater than the team. If you struggle, which you're going to do. If you don't win every game, which more than likely is going to happen, then the pressure, the attention that you wanted that was positive is going to become very negative. You wanted the limelight. You wanted you know, the place uh, that is special, and yet here you are not delivering. And so this is, for me, the kind of the reminder in this life of humility is, A, we all have faults. B, they all can be exposed. And don't put so much pressure on yourself by pointing to yourself all the time um, as someone who is great, but, but let others you know, see your good works. And again, what is the point of doing good? The point of doing good is not to be seen anyhow. The point of doing good is just recognizing it and, and serving the Lord who first served us. Uh, my favorite pa passage, as you probably know, is Philippians 2, where Jesus uh, humbled himself, becoming obedient even to death, death on the cross. You know, Jesus showed his love for us, that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. So pride comes before the fall. You know, our arrogance has no room for Jesus, has no room for God in our lives. And it just leads to self-destruction and the disdain and really kind of hatred of others. So why is true humility essential to receiving the blessings of God's kingdom? Well, again, where is your direction at when you are not humble? It's on yourself rather than on God, so you're not even remembering who God is or, you know, seeing God as the one who's great. I think King Saul got caught up in this, didn't he? You know, King Saul got so caught up in himself that he failed to recognize God, and then he lost uh, God altogether. So how is true humility produced? How can we be these people who uh, put God first, not ourselves, who put others first, not ourselves? How can we do that? So now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. So humility is just in the fact that we are all sinners, and that as much as we do good, we still have to remember that we cannot do what is perfect according to the law, and we're all uh, held accountable. Um, so we serve because we have been served, uh, not because uh, it saves us. Uh, because now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift to the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You know, don't remember, you know, don't think of yourselves more highly than you ought. Than you ought. Remember you're a sinner. Remember uh, that Jesus is the one who has made you right with God. And therefore, serve the Lord rather than yourself. And, then, and, and so doing, you're going to serve others. You know, when God's love is first and foremost in your life, 
you will be able to love others as you love yourself. And, and that's a true part. You know, those who are very arrogant should be great at loving others if they love themselves so much. So modern psychology teaches us that people need to feel good about themselves to be able to live healthy lives and to utilize their talents fully, right? We talk about encouragement and, you know, you can do it. And, and that is a great motivator for, for uh, excelling and succeeding. Today, some even take the assertiveness training to help them overcome bad feelings about themselves that have been resulted from them being continually put down by people more uh, people important to them. So, what gives us as Christians the best reasons for having a good self-image? You know, our redemption in Christ, that we are a new creation. You know, our baptism, this identity as a child of God uh, is greater than everything else. You know, a man can make fun of us, man can uh, say that we're no good and will never amount to anything, but we are a child of God. We are the redeemed. We are the saved. So carry that with you. You know, it's so frustrating to me that we allow the world and our nature to, to really um, define us. You know, we've been defined by Jesus, death and resurrection. So remember, look in the mirror. I'm a child of God. I, whatever man says doesn't matter to me. Um, I will hold on to that. I will live in his forgiveness and mercy. So how does knowing we are who we are help us to serve others in true humility? Uh, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water in the base and began to wash the disciples' feet. Uh, and wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. So how does knowing who we are help us to serve others in true humility? Um, you know, we're totally dependent on God. That's our motivation to serve others. You know, we have been served so that we can serve. And um, there's just no, no point in pointing to ourselves as um, that which... Um, is most important but what most important who most important is is God and what he has done for us um, so you know I said I think we we look at this text and it's hard to believe within the church that this is even uh, a potential but Paul faced this you know the the disciples when they were going out and doing miracles and preaching you know people wanted to worship Paul you know they wanted to worship Peter they wanted to elevate them because of the good that they were doing and it was great that they were doing good but to the credit of Paul and Peter, we preach Christ crucified, you know. Um, we are servants of God. And you're not to worship me, but worship the one who sent me. And that's what we need to keep in mind as well, um, that we all need the Lord. So he also said to the man who had invited him, when you give a dinner or banquet then, do not invite your friends or brothers or relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return. In other words, boost your ego, and it's, this becomes a, a cycle, and you will be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Now, when you look at the opening uh, part uh, of our text, where Jesus healed the man with dropsy, this really is the answer for that. The answer Jesus is saying is, if this man was, was a well-known in the community, one of your buddies, you probably would have acted on his behalf, even though it was the Sabbath, or been more inclined to. But this man, who you did not know, who was, who was in this vis uh, very difficult situation, you weren't going to help or act uh, on at all. And Jesus is saying, this is the way that we should really live with others, is not just do what is comfortable and do uh, good to those who will pump us up and you know easy to do but rather look to those who who are the disenfranchised to those who are having a more difficult life and make their life easier be a blessing to them who need it even more so so Jesus then addressed himself to the host about people they entertain he said do not invite your friends or your brothers we can write this in here get my pen ready uh, do not invite your friends. Get the pen going. Let's see what this one said. Right. Okay. Do 
going to invite your friends. Um, or your brothers. Now this is not an exclusive statement, right, from Jesus. So you can still have friends and relatives over and things like that. But just be careful about your motivation, right, uh, while you're doing it. And don't forget about those around you. Even if it's on the Sabbath day when there's somebody in need, that is doing good, right? That is doing good, and that is acceptable even on the Sabbath, right? Invite the poor, crippled, lame, blind, right? It helps to know that phoni... Uh, invite is a present tense and implies continuing action. Do this. Continue to do this. Why this warning is continue inviting those on the first list uh, because you know that that is easy and they can aid our ego. We expect something in return, right? This is what's taking place. With what was he encouraging uh, to keep on inviting those on the second list? You know, this is just love of neighbor. To see everyone as whom God has made, right? These are all our neighbors. These are all people whom God created and redeemed. What categories of people in our society would Jesus include on his list of those we are to invite when you give a dinner? Well, it'd be the same thing here. Um, you know, anyone who is considered to be less than, not as important, struggling in our world, can't pay you back, you know, people like that. Um, and, and who will really appreciate what you're doing, too. I mean, although your friends and brothers and relatives you have this, this common bond with, but here's people really going to appreciate what you're able to do. And, again, it's not necessarily that you're talking about a meal. You're talking about your relationship to others, how you treat others, how, how you're um, you know, living this hum humble life and recognizing everyone around you. So why should we be concerned about such people? And how can we take practical steps to implement Jesus' encouragement to invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind? Well, this is about, you know, live in humility. So be humble. Remember, you know, how we are a poor estate because of our sin. And Jesus invited us um, into his marriage feast of the Lamb by our baptism, by grace through faith. And the same is true uh, with everyone else. Don't look down upon others as less than to build yourself up or to elevate yourself, but rather, you know, see those around you, including yourself, as someone who is, you know, in sin, poor, crippled, lame, and blind spiritually, and one whom Jesus redeemed. Uh, but those who certainly have more challenges in our world today, uh, we should be concerned about such people and, and work to to give them places of honor and uh, to work to support and encourage them um, so that they know that they are uh, of great worth and value um, and that Jesus died for them too and rose for them. And so, you know, it's a part of our continuing look at being humble, uh, being a servant of the Lord, uh, as, as Jesus showed this great love for us so we in turn love others again thanks for joining me today it's, it's a, a wonderful text really Luke 14 um, Jesus just kind of uh, helping those who were uh, considered to be of, of great authority and, and power in Jesus day to, to step back a little bit and to uh, approach their, their life and, and what, they, what they have not just in service to themselves not just in service to those who are close, closely tied to them, but use it to serve all people. And that's what unity is about, uh, joining us together by faith in Jesus, crucified and risen. Well, thanks again for joining me uh, today. We will continue our uh, weekly Bible studies and, uh, and share this with your friends if they would like to join you as well. And we'll see you again next week. Uh, may God bless your day.